This video brought to you by Skillshare. Hi. Today I'm going to tell you how I managed to turn a bunch of common building materials into this. The Shikai Zangetsu from Bleach. Zangetsu! So my original plan for this video was to take a crack at building Ichigo's true Zanpakuto since it just had its anime debut. And don't worry, that build and that video are still coming. But I hadn't seen Bleach in like 15 years and I had heard a lot of great things about Thousand Year Blood War. So in preparation for that, I decided to reread the entire manga. And that Shikai is just so iconic and seeing it again hit me with so much nostalgia that I just couldn't resist. Only problem is I'm not a blacksmith or really a metal worker of any kind. So I had to get creative. I decided to build the sword using kind of a wooden core. One, because that's a material I can actually work with. And two, wood is generally lighter than metal, which is important when the finished product is gonna be like five feet long. Speaking of which, I went back and forth on the actual dimensions of the sword quite a lot. It tends to change shape a little bit from drawing to drawing, and I wasn't sure which one of those versions was definitive. And then I found it. Bleach chapter 133, Memories in the Rain, part two. In the manga, every chapter has kind of a cover art page. They're usually fun little extras that are pretty unrelated to the story going on. Maybe the main cast all hanging around, wearing some cool outfits. But 133 was special because not only did it give me a perfect side profile view of the sword, but it gave me that view next to Ichigo, who apparently has a canonical height of five feet, eight and a half inches. From there, it's easy enough to figure out the sword's dimensions using that height as a reference point. Okay, back to the wooden core. I actually stole the idea from my own Dragon Slayer build where I stacked up pieces of cardboard and made almost a topographical map of the sword blade. The only difference is here I used quarter inch plywood because the cardboard was fun and easy to work with, but delicate and I wanted the Zanpak toe to actually be able to cut something. Otherwise, 14 year old prime bleach fan me would have been very disappointed because those were peak edge lord years. After cutting a few roughly sized pieces on the table saw, I used that Ichigo reference sheet to meticulously measure out the contour of the blade's edge and then trace that contour using a bendy little piece of wood. Then I cut it out on the bandsaw slash the jigsaw where the corners were too tight and then cleaned it all up using a sanding block. That was the base layer, but moving up, I had to make smaller pieces. The back of the sword was identical, so I could just trace that, but the blade needed to be smaller, so I had to do my whole measuring process over again. And then again. And if that seems at all tedious to you, yes. Each of those smaller pieces needed to be doubled up for either side of the blade, so I traced each one, cut it out on the bandsaw, and then took it over to the router and used a flush trim bit to copy those shapes. All you have to do is tape the rough oversized piece to the finished one, then give it a pass on the router and it perfectly copies that original shape. I had the finished pieces, but the plywood was only a quarter inch thick, so at this point the sword was kinda... So I picked up a piece of square steel rod to reinforce the handle and keep the sword blade nice and straight. I decided on one that was hollow on the inside, cut down on the weight. I just traced the outline of the rod and then cut a slot for it to rest in. The metal bar was exactly three quarter inches thick and each sheet of plywood was one quarter inch. So all I had to do was cut an identical slot in three different pieces and it fit perfect. Then it was time to glue everything together. Glue ups are a stressful, all or nothing, make or break time. So I made sure to plan everything out and set things up well ahead of time. I'm just kidding, I didn't do that at all. I haphazardly covered all the wooden pieces in wood glue and then used super glue to attach the metal rod. I hadn't really thought about my clamping procedure at all until I was already in the middle of the process. So I ended up just panic reaching for a nail gun and securing everything that way. And luckily it worked out totally fine. Now that I had the shape of the sword, the plan was to cover it in a thin layer of 22 gauge steel. It's the type of stuff that I think you would use for like auto body repair. I got it at Canadian Tire. How do you explain Canadian Tire to a non-Canadian? I feel like it's Home Depot meets Walmart with some automotive, with less tires than you'd think. The plan was to bend it down across the sword's layers to achieve that taper. So I took a little block plane and chamfered off the edges just so things would bend a little smoother and I wouldn't get these distinct square steps. Then it was time to start shaping the metal. After cutting the metal into slightly more workable pieces and then giving it a sand to get rid of whatever paint or finish it came with, I traced the sword's outline and then started the process of cutting it out using an angle grinder. 
There were tons of curves and weird little shapes in here, so in my experience, the key to making it go smoothly was to use lots of relief cuts and have a lot of patience. At the end of the day, I was pretty happy with how it turned out considering how far outside of my comfort zone this kind of thing is. And speaking of being outside your comfort zone, everything I do on this channel is about learning, trying new things, which is why I was so excited to get the chance to partner with today's sponsor, Skillshare. A huge part of the reason that I wanted to work with Skillshare is because I love learning new things and getting to do things that I've never done before. So for the B-roll of this ad read, please enjoy me taking my best shot at Seoko Sasaki's class, how to make homemade ramen from scratch. Over the past few years, I feel like we've all been slowly learning that work isn't necessarily the classic nine to five, one size fits all solution that we thought it was, or at least it doesn't have to be. I always knew that Skillshare had a ton of classes in creative fields like photography and video editing. And trust me, as someone whose skills in those areas are self-taught, those are very valuable resources. But I had no idea how deep of a catalog of career focused classes they had too. Things like time management, productivity, portfolio building, just straight up starting a business. There are a ton of resources for anyone who might be looking to make a change, even just a little one. So if this is the year you wanna start working towards that new goal, then head down to the link in the description. The first thousand people to use it get a one month trial of Skillshare, totally free. Plus it does a lot to support the channel. So if you're interested, make sure to use that one so Skillshare knows I sent you and they can continue to help me keep the lights on. Okay, thank you Skillshare, back to the build. After sanding down all the jagged edges I had just made with the angle grinding process, it was time to attach it to the wooden form. I decided to do it in two steps because trying to get things securely attached and properly aligned all at the same time felt like a logistical nightmare. The first and easier part of the process was to glue the flat part of the blade. I used two-part epoxy because once the stuff fully cures, it's pretty much indestructible and uh, <laughs> I was gonna need it. I tried so the bend was a little more challenging. I used a little stick to smoosh the epoxy down into that crack along the edges and then glued it down using pretty much every clamp I own. After letting things cure overnight, sure enough, it was super solid. I had cut the metal shape intentionally oversized. So at this point, I used a variety of different discs to cut, grind, and sand that metal shape until it was nice and flush with the wooden form. This is the point where the vision was starting to come together, so I moved on to the next side. And then after cutting it out and gluing the flat section, I had a little bit of a problem on my hands. I had to glue the second bend, but that angle was a challenge. Clamps exert pressure on a flat plane straight on, which wouldn't work here. So with that earlier panic glue up still fresh in my memory, I decided to actually think this through. Fool me seven times, shame on you. Fool me eight or more times, shame on me. I cut out a bunch of these little wooden blocks that had the same angle as the sword blade, and then I glued them right to the metal so that the clamps would have a flat surface to grab onto. It worked really well. The only problem was that the clamping pressure was really localized, so if there were some gaps, not a huge deal. Just had to re-glue the blocks and re-clamp the problem areas on a second glue up. Once everything was all glued up, it was the exact same process as the first time around. Getting rid of most of the excess with a cutting disc and then grinding down the rest of the way and then sanding one final pass to make everything nice and flush. The faces of the sword were looking great, but there were still a few little pieces left to do on the handle and the top of the sword. Look, at this point, you know the deal. Cut, glue, grind flush. The only tricky bit here was the curved part at the base of the handle. I just transferred the rough shape onto a piece of paper, emphasis on rough, and then I had another nice little panic glue up as I realized I hadn't actually thought about how I was gonna exert that curved pressure on the handle. Yeah! I ended up just ripping up some Gorilla Tape into small strips and securing it that way, and it turned out mostly okay. At this point, I was super happy with how it turned out, but it's time to make it look like a Zanpakuto. I decided to clean things up by using a palm sander to carefully work my way up through the grits one at a time. And it's, it's possible that a few of those were unnecessary. Look at that. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. Look at this. But wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. Very nice. Things were looking nice, but a little bit artificial. So I decided to give a couple passes by hand just to give a little bit more of a natural look. And when I got to the highest grit sandpaper, I wiped things down with mineral oil just to give a nice clean polish. Then I taped off the sections that I wanted to keep metallic and hit everything else with some glossy black spray paint. Once it had dried and the tape was off, I thought it looked a little too black. Again, it looked a little bit artificial, so I rubbed on some graphite powder just to bring the color down a little bit and give it kind of a, a weathered metallic sheen. All that's left was to wrap the handle. 
I just wound my way around, keeping things as tight as possible, applying super glue every once in a while in a kind of discreet area, just to keep everything where I wanted it. Then I used a pair of scissors to make things look kind of tattery, and then rubbed some dirt on just so it wouldn't look quite so pristine. Last up was to sharpen the thing. My sharpening experience is pretty much limited to chisels and saws and things that aren't the size of a sixth grader, so this was me more or less making it up as I went along. I used a combo of the drill and the angle grinder to put on that initial bevel, and then I used a whetstone to finish things off by hand. And it was finally done. Go ahead and have the first strike. Is that it? Is that really all you have? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 